From a, a gourmet point of view, this is a choice sewer. <laughs> Dubbed as possibly the world's greatest pranksters and a group of people who do nothing more than adventurous mischief, I wanted to highlight a group that archaeologists have attempted to collect data from, a group that does not get as much attention as you think it would after hearing about their organized events and what this group stands for. Their name is the Cacophony Society. The Cacophony Society can be best described as a randomly gathered network of free spirits united in the pursuit of experiences beyond the pale of mainstream society. This group began in 1986 by surviving members of the now defunct Suicide Club of San Francisco. This group was studied by archaeologists during the Burning Man self-expression event. Basically, they love to destroy the null and dull everyday flow of life and anyone can join in. One of their common phrases is, you may already be a member. Of course, an event like Burning Man would attract to the Cacophony Society and the chaotic wave that they seem to carry. The Burning Man event grew the host about 50,000 people every year and continues today. The main issue that archaeologists faced when studying the material remains of this event is that the Burning Man participants take or destroy any trace of this event. So for this study, archaeologists utilize fieldwork methods such as participant observation to collect data. Though something I found quite cool about this study is that these archaeologists obviously were after collecting data on material remains. So they decided in 2008 to begin attending the Burning Man event every year. They showed up early to witness the construction of the temporary city and stayed until it was all taken down. This meant archaeologists could collect material byproducts before, during, and after the event. Here are some clips recorded during the Burning Man event. Though, what I would want to draw on from this study is the involvement of the Cacophony Society here. A quote from the study goes something like this. Members of the Cacophony Society who participated in the Baker Beach event knew that the Black Rock Desert Playa provided the place where you could, according to one participant, sit around and blow stuff up. So they built a man and burnt him on the Black Rock Desert on Labor Day weekend, 1990. Moving from the Burning Man, next, I want to talk about one of their more popularly known events, known as the San Francisco Cacophony Society Breakers to Bay 1996 event. At this event, Cacophony Society participants wore salmon suits and ran the opposite direction of runners during a marathon in San Francisco. The thought of this event alone is comical, but here I would present a few short clips that were recorded during this event.
ending the discussion on the Cacophony Society, because it is December, I wanted to talk about SantaCon. Since its occurrence and community is like that of the Cacophony Society's events, SantaCon began in 1974 when a group of anarchist members of the Danish art collective Slovognen started the first iteration of SantaCon, though they did this as a way to rage against the greed and capitalism that have corrupted Christmas. Today, SantaCon is more about large groups of people throughout December rallying together to flood cities with drunk Santa Clauses. The largest event of this year already was just a few days ago. Here is a short clip of NYC SantaCon 2022. We're in Midtown as the annual Santa Con event got underway to paint the town red, as they put it. Started with fun and games and music. Then they headed out to various bars around the borough. Nearly 70 businesses are donating a portion of their profits today to help Santa Con raise money. We've uh, raised money for a lot of charities that focus on hunger and the arts in the New York City area. Uh, specifically, we work with Secret Sandy Claus. I hope you enjoyed learning about these wacky groups because in the end, you may already be a member. <laughs>